I've already done my overview on what I think is the best bits of this Dell XPS 15, but I said I was going to do a video on performance, and that is exactly what we're going to do. Welcome to my performance benchmarks of this Dell XPS 15. I set out and did three different types of performance tests on this laptop. One of them would be the synthetic benchmarks like PC Mark and 3D Mark. The other one would be a real world render test. And then of course we've got the gaming tests, which are very interesting. The first lot I'm going to do are the synthetic performance tests. When I did these tests, I did them on two settings. I had them plugged in on high performance mode, and then I did them on battery as well to see what sort of performance difference we could get. On the battery, it automatically goes down to the Dell settings, so I thought, why not? This is what you're going to be running your laptop on most of the time on battery, because you don't want to drain the battery so much. On PC Mark 8, on the home setting, we got a, plugged in, a score when it was plugged in of 3006. When it was on battery, we got 2626. That's a performance difference of about 12%, 12.6% to be precise, off of the plugged in score. Moving on to the creative section of PC Mark 8, we've got a plugged in score of 2816 and a battery score of 2611. This is another performance change of about minus 7.3% when you're running on battery compared to being plugged in. Moving on to 3D Mark Vantage, we've got a plugged in score of P12700 with a battery score of P11315. This is a percentage change of about 10.9%. Moving on to 3D Mark 11, I got a plugged in score of P3019, but the battery wouldn't run at all. Don't know why, kept trying, I tried about 10 times on, on a different day, would not run. Moving on to 3D Mark Firestrike, I got a plugged in score of 2049, and a battery score of 1807. There's a percentage change of a minus about 11.8%. This also has a nice graph telling you where exactly this, this laptop comes in compared to other sort of generic classes of computers. And you see it sits right between the ultra thin light notebooks and the gaming laptops, exactly where they've marketed this at. I then did a real world render with the laptop going against my main desktop. The desktop features an overclocked i7-3770K, an AMD 7870 and 16 gigabytes of 1600 MHz RAM. They both ran exactly the same files to render and were both using Sony, Ve Sony Vegas Movie Studio 11. The laptop ran this render in 9 minutes and 19 seconds, whilst the desktop ran it in 7 minutes and 35 seconds. For the laptop, that's fairly good going. The, the performance difference is not that big. It's only about 18 point works, 18.6% slower than my desktop. So you're getting about 20% delta difference in rendering times, which for on portable and considering how thin it is compared to my laptop, my desktop, it's kind of amazing. Now we're moving on to the gaming benchmarks. All of these would run at maximum settings at 1080p. But bear in mind, this is a laptop with a not amazing GPU in it, so the scores are fairly low. I do have an upcoming video though of max of low end 1080p versus ultra on 720p, which is very interesting and applies very muchly so to this laptop. In fact, I ran the benchmarks on this laptop because it's that perfect gap of do you go low 1080p for more pixels or ultra on 720p for amazing effects. It's very interesting. You should check it out when I upload it. Moving on to the benchmarks. We have Bioshock Infinite, like I said, maximum at 1080p. Had a minimum FPS of 6.53, a maximum of 106.15, and an average of 32.5. Crisis 2, maximum 1080p, minimum of 13 FPS, maximum of 29 FPS, average of 18.32 FPS. Far Cry 3, maximum 1080p, minimum of 6 FPS, maximum of 30 FPS, average of 20.31 FPS. Metro Last Light, maximum 1080p, 
minimum FPS of 15, maximum of 34, average of 25.96 FPS. Civ 5, maximum 1080p, minimum of 14 frames per second, maximum of 53, average 42.32. Right bang out in that playable zone if you can deal with the minimum drops. But in Civ, that's generally because the CPU is trying to keep up with something, and I think it does it on almost every single computer. And finally, trying to maximum 1080p, minimum FPS was 13, maximum was 18, average was 15.51. This was with a lot of filters, and I'm not exactly surprised on why this tanks so much. So there we go. That was the performance tests I ran on this laptop. That's all the performance tests I could think of, but if you want me to run in more performance tests, let me know which ones you want me to do, if they don't cost money, and I'll run them for you and post the results in, the, in a comment in a reply to you. If you like this video, then please give it a like. If you think anyone else you know would like it, please share it around, do whatever. If you want to see more of these sort of videos, I've got some great videos coming out soon, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching, I'll see you later.